Hi everybody, it is January 12, 2019, and I have a very, very white sky, no sun, and it's cold here in Anderson, South Carolina. I want to go through, first, just a recap for those who know about Agenda 21 and Agenda 2030, but I also want to bring to the attention of those who don't know how dangerous is the implementation of this United Nations plan to reshape the world. I'm going to be focusing on FEMA and how FEMA, their role in reshaping our country right to the current date. It goes on, doesn't matter what Trump says, what matters is our federal agencies are very involved. So, it gets a little flippy when I post videos showing federal agencies involved, and then I get someone leaving a comment saying, well, Trump did the right thing by the federal government. The states, you know, mayors and governors may be signing on to the Paris Agreement, but Trump did the right thing. No, Trump did not do the right thing. Trump is lying. Trump knows. He has appointed the heads of these agencies, and these agencies, the federal agencies, are working together to continue the implementation of Agenda 2030 right here in the United States, right to the current date. But for those of you who don't know how dangerous this is, United Nations Agenda 21 and ICLE, which is the local arm of the United Nations. The ICLE goes into communities um, to, they bring in their people and they reshape those communities in accordance with Agenda 2030. Okay, Maurice Strong, socialist senior advisor to the Commission on Global Governance and the driving force behind promoting the concept of sustainability said this, industrialized countries, Americans, have developed and benefited from the unsustainable patterns of production and consumption which have produced our present dilemma. And so many people believe that because they won't do the research to find out that this climate change, global warming thing is a lie. And the deception brought about by it allows a lot of people to believe that we need to change. Now, of course we need to change and we need to, you know, confront the legitimate problems that we have problems related to our own behavior, you know, consumerism, run amok, but if they would only understand that man is controlling the weather, then they might understand that they are having their country reshaped with man controlling the weather, bringing about a lot of floods, a lot of fires to get them out of areas to bring them into these mega cities, the mega regions, because it's no longer sustainable to have so many people spread out in rural areas living in their single homes. Well, that's, that's big. And not a lot of people can grasp it. Not a lot of people can even consider that being a reality, but it is taking place. And if they only knew how organized and intricate is the network all over the world, all over the world, all doing their part in implementing these changes, Yes, it takes a lot of time and energy to do that research, but a lot of people have done the research for you. So if they would only 
listen, um, well, we could have gotten somewhere, but we do have a lot of Americans who just refuse. They love their ignorance and, well, clearly, they love just living, not caring about anything but their own little lives. That is true. Uh, but, yeah, industrial countries, uh, uh, unsustainable patterns of production, consumption, it's got to change. It is clear that current lifestyles and consumption patterns of the affluent middle class involving high meat intake, consumption of large amounts of frozen and convenience foods, the use of fossil fuels, appliances, home, workplace, air conditioning, and suburban housing are not sustainable. The shift is necessary toward lifestyles less geared to environmentally damaging consumption patterns. You know, they socially engineered you to become consumers, and now, well, all of that has to change. The concept of sovereignty has to yield in favor of the new imperatives of global environment, environmental cooperative, collectivism, socialism, capitalism, individualism, freedom, property rights, unsustainable. Well, this is the reshaping of the world for the elite few to have complete control over those who will be left alive in the mega regions. They will be the slaves for the rich, for the corporations. Agenda 21 is an action plan of the United Nations related to sustainable development and was an outcome of the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, 1992. President Bush signed on to it. It is a comprehensive blueprint of action to be taken globally, nationally, locally, by organizations of the United Nations, governments, and major groups in every area in which humans directly affect the environment. To further the green agenda, you hear about incessantly from the left, get out of this divide. The left, the right, Republicans are also treasonous and helping to reshape this country as dictated by the United Nations. So, you know, they have the left voicing it loudly but Republicans are right in there playing their role, but they want that left-right divide so that you fight one another instead of stepping back and taking a look at who the real enemy is. Government. Government is your enemy. So the key is control of private property. The key is no more private property rights because you don't know how to be a good steward. That's that's now the phrase that they're using. You, you don't own your property. You're a steward of your property uh, to get you into that psyche where you realize that you don't own anything. Well, frankly, I haven't been someone who's been big on this ownership of, of land. I'm kind of, uh, well, I'm a, I like the Native American way, but um, regardless, what is happening with all of this is very, very dangerous. Uh, land cannot be treated as an ordinary asset controlled by individuals and subject to the pressures and inefficiencies of the market, the provision of decent dwellings and healthy conditions for the people can only be achieved if land is used in the interest of society as a whole. That's not the author of this article saying that. That's the United Nations saying it. Saying it. What does that mean? No longer will you have individual opportunities to own property because individual rights are not sustainable, private property rights are not sustainable, 
you got to go with the collective. This is collectivism. This is socialism. This is communism. This is the reshaping of the world. Agenda 21 proposes an array of actions which are intended to be implemented by every person on earth. It calls for specific changes in the activities of all people. It requires a profound reorientation of all humans unlike anything the world has ever experienced. Not the author of the article saying that, but the United Nations saying it. Sustainable development. So Agenda 21, it's, that's the blueprint. Agenda 2030 are all the goals to achieve Agenda 21. Sustainable development is a pattern of resource use that aims to meet human needs while preserving the environment so that these needs can be met not only in the present but also for generations to come. This is one of the key PC ways Agenda 21 is pushed. According to the United Nations, here are a list of things that do not fit into sustainable development plans. Skiing, ski runs, grazing of livestock, plowing of soil, building fences, industry, single-family homes, paved and tarred roads, logging activities, dams and reservoirs, power line construction, and economic systems that fail to set proper value on the environment. I will link below to everything, but right here on this page, there's a lot of information. The concept of sustainability is in fact nothing less than socialism from the time of the Rio conference to the setup by President Clinton of the President's Council on Sustainable Development to the implementation within federal and state agencies, the UN Agenda 21 plan is being implemented without most people even being aware of it and all that it means to the fundamental change from individual liberty to a combination of socialism, Marxism, collectivism, communism. Even those who do know are not doing anything. Today, it is being put into action by federal agencies, state agencies, county, city, and town planning departments. Nothing has changed under Trump. Nothing. So, you can watch these videos. Um, you can learn about ICLE, the International Council for Local Environmental Initiatives. Interesting is, here's a link, the hundreds of cities in the United States that became members of ICLE. What does that mean? You join on to ICLE. You, you, well, I'll give you an example. Great Barrington, Massachusetts, which is so it was a green, suddenly I saw these signs going up, a green town. And I did a little bit of research because people who were going to the town council meetings, business owners, now Great Barrington is a very, very small town. And the Main Street, uh, Main Street strip is like four blocks, but you've got a lot of little stores owned by people in the area and they were they had such beautiful trees so for the summer that allowed people to come shopping because those trees created a whole lot of shade suddenly they wanted to take down all of those trees suddenly I started seeing in the paper mixed-use properties going up all of, you know, that language that is the United Nations Agenda 21-2030 language. The town council was not listening to any of the residents in Great Barrington. Nobody wanted those trees down. They took them down. They voted to take them down. And I did a little bit of research because somebody said that, like, it was 15 years ago from that time that I was looking into it, which was, I think, 2012. The
the town council and the town or, or the town president and the town clerk had equal power and suddenly the town clerk was put under the town president and that's all I needed to hear to do the research to find out okay the the, the uh, consolidating power with the town president I knew something was up sure enough I found out that the small independent towns in New England their power was being usurped by counties. Great Barrington had lost their independent power. It was usurped by, well, it was out of Pittsfield, Massachusetts, but it was usurped by, I'm not sure, of the county. So Great Barrington no longer had the independent power that it used to. It had to take the dictates from the county, and that county was a member of Ickley. All of the changes that took place in Great Barrington are in accordance with Agenda 2030. It is so brilliant, this plan, and it is working. Ickley no longer has on their website the cities. They took off from their website all of the U.S. cities and towns that had become members of Ickley. In 2012, I was able to see all of the cities. Um, the questions here, well, I'm just going to point out once again, air conditioning in homes and businesses is not sustainable. That's why you have an awful lot of talk about that air conditioning. Well, the air conditioning is causing power outages during the heat waves that are manufactured by man. I have a lot of videos on my channel, but there are countless numbers of videos on weather modification and how man can create heat waves. All you have to do is do the research to find out, but now air conditioning is causing power outages air conditioning you've seen and I posted a video on wow a slew of articles air conditioning needs to be rationed all of this is coming to you it is coming to you and it's coming rapidly actually um, consumption of large amounts of frozen foods meats not sustainable Use of fossil fuels, our Department of Energy today under Trump is going sustainable, renewable energies. So Trump has not done a great job with getting us out of the Paris Agreement because it's still being implemented. Suburban homes, not sustainable. Plans uh, to relocate individuals and families who already have homes in sur suburbs that that's a question what what are the United Nations plans to relocate these people I'm going to show you how FEMA is very much involved in that sustainable development program is to create walkable communities which allow only human powered transportation biking walking and mass transit systems cars are not sustainable uh, and it requires strict limitation on urban sprawl, establishing urban development boundaries, which I have shown numerous times in videos. These are your urban uh, areas, your mega regions, all of the gray areas. There will be no human habitation. Only humans will be allowed in the colored areas. And you noticed how there is very little human habitation on the coast. They're getting people off the coast. And they do that by bringing about repeated flooding. And then FEMA goes in and buys up the property. Ooh, boy, the deception. 
it is just so convoluted it is really even hard to uh, communicate it um, uh, you've got to relocate inside urban development boundaries those mega regions all resources will be regulated and controlled everything will be regulated and controlled now a lot of people think that they're still free not even realizing how many factors are controlling their lives every aspect of our lives is already being controlled our health controlled by the aerosol spraying and and the frequencies and all of the chemicals in our foods genetically modified organisms that we're eating and everything's being controlled taxes finances controlled everything but the controls that are going to be coming when you get into your mega region you won't be able to travel outside at all without permission and you won't have a car only the bureaucrat officials will be working you will have a basic income it is 1984 on steroids 24-7 cameras will be watching everything you do you make a wrong move you step off the curb and try to jaywalk everything you do is watched that's the world we are developing here and lawn mowers backyard barbecues wood stoves eventually all of it will be banned wildlands project which is part of the united nations plan for sustainable development and biodiversity calls for setting aside 50 percent of the united nations or united states for wildlife corridors the number is actually higher than 50 percent so the united nations it is not sustainable for you to live in the gray areas. We've got to put a huge amount of land, get the humans off it, because the humans are destroying it, get them into these mega regions where life is sustainable. Now, let me show you FEMA's role in this. They have hazard mitigation grant programs post fire but they also have hazard mitigation programs repeated flooding flooding may impact the stability the stability of a home or an entire neighborhood damage or destroy personal property impact property values and lead to injuries or loss of life emergency responders may risk their own lives to help residents escape rising water they use the guilt factor. You stay in your home, and that's an area that has been hit with repeated flooding. You are putting the emergency responders at risk. That's the point. So, man brings about the flooding, then he brings about the flooding again in the same area, and then you are guilted by man for staying in that area. The EPA, many agencies are involved in these hazard mitigation plans, storm smart cities, integrating green infrastructure. Um, South Carolina has their mitigation grant program. Virtually every town, county, state has a mitigation grant program to allow FEMA to come in and buy up properties. Houston, city of Houston, they have theirs. Uh, South, uh, North Carolina, you've got yours. Towns, town of Olive in New York, they have their hazard mitigation plan. And you have 
<laughs> even Noah involved and you have these flood mitigation program coordinators who manipulate those who have been victims of floods and the lessons that Jennifer McCulloch learned how to manipulate a whole neighborhood or community into selling their property for FEMA. Okay. Um, Jennifer learned that towns were reluctant to acknowledge their flood risks by using good risk communication techniques, including sharing stories and tailoring the conversation to meet her audience needs. McCulloch helped local officials see the importance of flood acquisition and the majority ultimately chose to participate in the program. Community officials may be resistant to talking about buyouts because they are worried about lowering property values. One helpful way to start the conversation is to remind them that the goal is to move residents and first responders out of harm's way. Yes, guilt them. Know your audiences and adapt efforts to match their goals. Pay attention to how the audience is reacting to the presentation. If you see eyes glazing over, try another approach. Take the heavy lifting off the applicant's shoulder. Offer a buyout while the mud is still wet in their basement. Yes, move quickly to acquire properties before owners start rebuilding or their homes are foreclosed on. Make sure a subject matter expert is included on the team when developing a buyout program. Navigating a buyout process is complicated and emotional, especially for people who have just been through a disaster. It's important to let people express their emotions and not take criticisms personally. Acknowledge homeowners' experiences and concerns. That's the way you manipulate them into selling their property to FEMA. And who is who pays for it? You! Your tax dollars is allowing FEMA to go into these communities, buy up property. Oh, but FEMA has tight restrictions on those buyouts. What is it? You can't build. You have to create green space. This is FEMA's way of making all of the gray area green. United Nations, Agenda 2030. Not sustainable to have people in these areas, only sustainable in these little mega regions. All of this will turn green for wildlife. They don't like humans. And that's kind of understandable, but um, we have no freedom. So I'm just going to go through some headlines to show you. And I have posted videos on this before showing FEMA buying out properties in 2011, 2012. Uh, all right, most of these articles that you're going to see, this one is January 6, 2019. Most of them are 2018. FEMA is buying out an awful lot of property. And if you do a search on this, you will see, holy shit, FEMA is all over, all over buying property. How is it that they even have the money, considering how many times did we hear FEMA is broke, FEMA going bankrupt, FEMA out of money? Well, it clearly has millions, millions, millions to buy property. Now, how it works is, okay, you, you apply for these grants. FEMA approves. The county or state has to buy it out initially. And then two weeks later, FEMA reimburses the county or state. FEMA, FEMA, the purchase of the properties, FEMA covers 75% County and state covers 25%.
But when you see the numbers, your tax dollars are buying up properties, your county taxes, your state taxes, all the money that you fork over to your state, county, federal government, it's to purchase properties to turn those areas green. FEMA was buying, uh, the last video I did on this, FEMA was buying up whole towns and turning it green. So St. Joseph County, uh, Indiana, 14 homeowners are added to the 40 last year for FEMA to purchase those homes. Pender County, North Carolina, buyouts. Okay, you had the hurricanes last year in North Carolina, South Carolina. Many areas were flooded. Then what happens? You have FEMA consultants come into these areas. They hold workshops and they say, hey, climate change, you're going to be flooded again, but we can buy your property and people sell, especially when they've been living in an area that has been hit over and over because they can't afford. They can't, the, every disaster, people take a financial hit. Flood insurance goes up. Uh, a cost to buy only two properties in Chatham in Georgia, over 600,000. Vermont, all of Vermont, <laughs> gets federal okay to buy flood-prone homes. So FEMA approved a Vermont plan to continue buying out homes and properties that are prone to flood damage. Okay, but a new mitigation program plan was put into effect in November of 2018, and now FEMA is going to buy homes that are not flood damaged. Wow! So your tax dollars allows FEMA to buy homes that people are living in, and they happen to be in a flood-prone area, but hey, FEMA is going to pay market value for that home via you, your tax dollars. The money that you make working, you hand over to our federal government. That money, some of it allocated for FEMA to buy up homes to reshape this country in accordance with the United Nations Agenda 2030. Isn't it great? So homeowners remain eligible eligible for the buyout program even if their homes were repaired and reoccupied after Irene or other more localized floods. Anyone in a flood prone area is eligible and they will turn it green. Fair Bluff, North Carolina. 3.6 million for buyouts and that's just part of the 8.3 million. Oh, wait, no. Uh, FEMA actually gave 71.6 million for 558 properties statewide. Wow. And what are they going to be doing with all of it? They demolish the homes, they turn it green. Okay, so you got uh, even this area, which I believe is South Carolina. Not entirely sure, but okay. Town council meeting. What's brought up is the possibility of a development that is going to be um, constructed. The residents say, don't, because it'll be flooded out. Oh, then we have talk of FEMA buying out the area. Huh. FEMA's all over the place. All over the country buying up 
property, land, homes. 11 in Pender County, this is North Carolina, received buyouts. Do you know how much money is spent on these buyouts? Uh, Denim, which is uh, Louisiana, the Baton Rouge floods two years ago. Well, FEMA offers elevate your homes or sell your properties. FEMA uh, Bettendorf rescues homeowners from rising insurance costs by up to 100 homes. Iowa flood insurance costing me more per month than my loan for the house. Uh, every time it rains, I start worrying. Do I have to bring everything up to the attic? Manufactured flash flooding repeated in areas. People get tired. Their finances now taking such a hit. Let's have FEMA come in and buy our homes. A whole county, Nashville, uh, buying out three properties and the only restriction is eh, you cannot build. It's got to be open space. Here's one of your flood, FEMA flood consultants that goes in. This guy came into, um, oh, I'm not sure where, doesn't matter where, because they're all over. This guy flies around the country and he's promoting FEMA's buyout program. 45 people gathered in for a meeting to listen to Jeff Ward. He says, I'm truly going to give you the best advice I can. Flooding is getting worse. Rain is getting heavier. Water totals are getting higher every year. Climate change, you've heard the IPCC said, it's gonna get worse. Flooding, rain, now. 56 inches, in, and that's the examples that he brings up, 36 inches in Texas in 24 hours. That's a crazy amount of rain. But more recently, the same city got 56 inches of rain. And people buy. I mean, people sell. The city's application included 57 properties with a total value of $10.6 That's just for 57 properties. If you look to see, and I tried to get the data on how many properties have been acquired by FEMA, couldn't find anything. The amount of money, it's in the billions. Billions of your money, your tax dollars, have gone to buying properties. Stony Creek, North Carolina, 34 residents. Um, Kentucky, 200 flood-prone properties. This, this is, I think, the only 2016 article I have. Yes, we're going to turn all of those lots into green space and we're going to plant trees. Richland County, South Carolina, once the homes are demolished, they will become county maintained green spaces designed to enhance naturally existing features in a way that helps reduce the impact of flood hazards on surrounding properties. Uh, FEMA looking to purchase flood prone homes in Kentucky Town. This is another Kentucky Town and 30 properties. Uh, FEMA approves the acquisition and demolition of 289 properties in South Carolina since 2017 at a cost of 51.5 million. Yes, our government. It's just concerned about how we emotionally feel. Oh my God. Well, Monette, Missouri, just trying to show you they're all over, all over, all over. Demolishing structures and turning those areas into green space. This, I believe, is Florida. South Carolina mayors sign on to Paris Climate Agreement. Yes, and they're pushing Agenda 2030 in their areas. 
Charleston used the federal grants to raise flood-prone properties part of a national trend. Ten million for 48 flood-prone properties in West Ashley. Yes, green space. Green space, green space. In accordance with the United Nations Agenda 2030. So, um, I'll, I'm not going to link below to all of these articles. If you want them, you can get them by the title of the article. Just put that title in a search. I will uh, link below to all of the documents. But yes, guys, FEMA is getting you out of these areas, putting you into your mega regions. It's happening. It's currently happening. Nothing has changed under Trump.